The pension obligation and pension cost is based on several assumptions. The most important one is the discount rate. This is the rate at which we discount future obligations. So this rate also helps us calculate the service cost and the interest cost. You need to remember that the discount rate used by a company is generally based on high quality corporate bonds. So if in a given country, the YTM on high quality corporate bonds is 6%, then this would be the rate to use in the pension calculations. Another important assumption is the rate of increase in compensation levels. The reason is simple. Typically, pension benefits are based on the final salary of an employee. So if it is estimated that an employee has another 10 years of service left, then the estimate of how much he or she will be earning at the end of 10 years is based on an assumption about the increase in salary. Expected return on plan assets. This is only used in US GAAP and we'll see examples later on how this number impacts the cost reported in the profit and loss statement. Length of service is important and again I'll use this picture. If we are assuming that employees will stay with the company for a long time then the pension obligation and the pension expense will tend to be higher. The pension benefits are accumulated over time so the longer the time that employees spend with the company, the higher the pension obligation and pension cost. So if a company is making pension payments after a person retires, and let's say these payments are till the person is alive, then obviously the longer he lives, the higher the payments made by the company. So companies need to estimate how long people will live. And if the assumption is that people will live for longer, then the pension obligation will be higher. Employee turnover. If there is high turnover, then the pension expense is going to be lower. This is because if the turnover is high, then employees will not be accumulating pension benefits. Companies with post employment healthcare plans disclose assumptions about healthcare costs. So if a company is saying that after the employees retire, they will continue to receive healthcare benefits, then obviously the value of that benefit depends on the cost of healthcare. So companies often assume that healthcare costs will rise at a certain rate in the short run. So a company might say that for five years time, the healthcare costs will rise at 10%. And then after that, the cost will rise at 6%. This 10% is the near term increase in healthcare costs. This is the long term trend rate in terms of healthcare costs. And five years is the time where we go from 10% to 6%. So if a company assumes a high near term increase in healthcare costs, that increases the value of the obligation. Similarly, a high number here increases the value of the obligation. And this point where we switch from 10% to 6% also impacts the value of healthcare costs. So if we assume instead of five that the 10% trend will continue for seven years, then that increases the present value of the obligation. Now I want you to try example four from the curriculum. Here we look at the impact of the three most testable assumptions. I've already talked about a higher discount rate, but let's go a little deeper. If we initially used a discount rate of 10% and then increased this to 12%, that will reduce the obligation. So if we look at our funded status, the funded status is calculated based on the present value of the pension obligation and the fair value of plan assets. When this number goes up, the present value of the pension obligation goes down. The fair value of plan assets is not impacted. So a higher discount rate is going to lower the overall obligation. In terms of the 
pension cost, you might recall that we talked about an interest component and a service cost component. There are other components also which make up the overall pension cost, but the two most important ones in the context of the discount rate are the interest component and the service cost. The service cost is clearly going to be lower. The interest component depends on the opening obligation and the discount rate. If we use a higher discount rate, the opening obligation will be lower and this is being multiplied by a rate which is higher. So typically, if the obligation is very far out in the future, then this impact dominates. Generally, the periodic cost will be lower because of lower opening obligation and lower service costs. So we are saying that generally when we use a higher rate, then the periodic pension cost comes down. The higher rate of compensation increase results in a higher obligation and a higher service cost. Higher expected return on plan assets. This has no impact on the plan assets because with plan assets we are using fair value. The higher expected return on plan assets is not used under IFRS. With US GAAP it will result in a lower pension expense on the income statement and we will see an example of how this works.